At the end of last year, Anthropic put out a great blog post called Building Effective Agents. What I wanted to do within this video is I wanted to apply some of the examples that they had within this and show you how you can build this out within your own application. What I'm gonna be using within this video is VectorShift. If you haven't used it before, it's a platform that allows you to build out AI applications as well as workflows. Whether you wanna build out a sophisticated workflow for a particular task, or if you wanna build out something like a chatbot, you'll be able to do all of that within this platform. I wanna go through the workflow of prompt chaining. The way that they describe prompt chaining is that it decomposes the task into a sequence of steps where each LLM call processes the output of the previous one. You can add programmatic checks on any intermediate step to ensure that the process is still on track. They have this visualization where you have an input, it will go and call something, then we'll have a gating function. The gating mechanism could be trying to validate the previous answer. It could be trying to determine, okay, does this meet a specific criteria, yes or no? What I'm gonna do within here is we're going to have a programming example. Let's imagine we're one of those applications, like a text to app builder or something along those lines. And the input is going to be the request to generate code. Well, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab an LLM node. And within here, I can use these double curly braces to access the input. I can select text. I'm gonna say, you are a code generation assistant. Your mission is to produce correct, concise TypeScript code that fully addresses the user requirements. Return only valid compilable TypeScript in a single fence code block. We have some guidelines within here, but the goal with this is just to give a coherent piece of TypeScript. So what I can do within this is I can have a second LLM and I can have that LLM check the work of the previous LLM. Now within this, I'll say you are a code validation assistant. You receive a snippet of TypeScript code. This is almost like acting like a QA for the previous step. Now there could also be an intermediate step within this where we'll actually try and compile that code as well. That's an important step if you're building out these AI applications, especially if you're trying to build something durable. Now in this case, we're using an LLM, but you could use something where you're actually gonna be sending this and having it compile as well to actually test that the code is working. Now within here, what I can do is I'm gonna say for the prompt, that's going to be the OpenAI input that we had from the previous node. I'll select OpenAI, then I'll select the response. That's going to be the output from the LLM. Now at the bottom here, I'm gonna indicate that I only want the output to be pass or fail. That's gonna allow me to have a conditional step as our next step to validate on whether it's passed. With the conditional logic, if it fails, for instance, we can respond back to the user to try again, or we could try and actually send and try it again and have some sort of loop mechanism. What I'm gonna do with in here is I'm going to select the input from the OpenAI one node and I'm going to click the response. Now in this case I'm going to say if the text contains and we'll say if it passes we'll go through this path. What we can do in the else condition is we can have a code fixer LLM. Let's say we were hoping to use OpenAI but for whatever reason that didn't work out we're going to pull out a model that is known for being good at writing code Sonnet 3.5 what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab our system prompt. Within our system prompt for this, I'm going to indicate that you are a code refinement assistant. Your task is to correct the TypeScript code that failed validation. We're going to use two different inputs. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the response for the first one in XML text. Now, what I'm going to use within this is I'm going to have those two curly braces and I'm going to reference that first node and that response from OpenAI. That's our code response. And then we also have our failure reason. And then within here, I can use those double curly braces and I can reference OpenAI as well as response. So now we can connect this to our else condition and it's only going to perform that if it fails. If it does pass, all that we really care about is actually returning that result to the user. Now next, since we did use this conditional node, what we also have to use when we use a conditional node is a merge node. So that's gonna allow us to handle and triage those different responses that we had from the conditional. Within here, we're going to first select if it is successful, what do we care about if it's successful? All that we care about returning to the user is I'm gonna use those curly braces again here. And what we care about is that successfully generated piece of code from that first node from OpenAI, because we know that second piece of code was just checking to see if it was validated. And if it was validated, we don't care about anything else within our graph. We just care about 
that successfully generated piece of code, at least in terms of that gating function that we had. And mind you, your gating function can be way more sophisticated. There could be a bunch of different gates to validate whatever you might be doing, especially in coding context, there probably are going to be a number of different checks to make your application more robust. Here, I'm going to select the response from OpenAI, and then I'm going to select the next path here, and this is going to be where I get our anthropic response, and I'm going to select for anthropic here, and that's going to be the two paths that we merge. And the way that this is going to work is we're going to use this pick first function. Whichever node gets there first, that's going to be what we ultimately send to our output. I'm going to grab our output node, and then finally I can go and I can connect this, and that's going to be the output that we generate for the user. Now, if I just zoom out here, so we did quite a bit here, but if we look at the reference chart on the bottom here, and if I just go over it quickly one more time, we have the input. This is going to be a query to generate a piece of code. We're going to have the code generated, in this case from GPT-4.0. Then from there, we have our gating function, and that's going to try and test to validate that our code is finished, that there's not syntax errors, and all of those types of things. Then from there, we're going to have this condition on if the text begins with pass, like we indicated from the previous step here, we're going to go and continue on to send that response to the user. Otherwise, we're going to send in the response to Anthropic to fix our code. Finally, we're going to merge those responses and we're going to pick the first one that is sent and that's going to be what gets outputted to the user. Now what I can do with Invector Shift is I can go and I can run this and I can say something like generate a hello world express server. And here we go. Here is our output of our code. We have the import, we have express, and we have our hollow world. And this looks great. In this case, it was a successful generation, but now let's go and dive into what is happening. Within VectorShift, the thing that I love with the platform, if I just expand this here, we have all the visualizations across the nodes here. We can see how long everything took. I can take a look here. I can look at the response within here. And the cool thing with this is let's say, okay, maybe a second's too long. Let's just say I toggle this over to GPT-4.0 mini and I try and run this again. Now I have a response that's under one second. And I also see that it is a successful response. But let's try and emulate a failing case. Let's say I'm a user and I ask for a syntax error. Now that we asked it to fail, just to emulate this case here, if I go over to the validator, that gating function that we have fail, and then we also have the reason like we asked for it, we see that it's failed and it's missing the closing parenthesis for app.listen method. Since it did fail, what it's going to do is it's going to go down this case where it's going to send that response to Anthropic. And if we take a look here, we see that Sonnet saved the day and generated the correct code for us here. And by the end of it, now we see this working code here. So now that was just one example from the blog post. There are a ton of different examples within here. If you're interested in seeing these types of videos again, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to build out more demonstrations like this over the coming months. The other thing that's great with this is it's really easy to deploy this as an application. So you can go click deploy, you can go and run the code from here like you saw me do. But if we click this export button and I click chatbot, I'll call this code gen wizard or something like that. We'll generate it here. Then within here, you can specify how you want your chat interface to look like. And then once you've set it up, you can change out all of the different aspects of your chat interface. You can change out the logo, whether you want a welcome message, all of the styling, you can do all of that within here. If I just go to export this, so you have the ability to add this on your site with a script tag or an iframe. Alternatively, you can open it within this chatbot here directly from this link. So now if I say generate me an express server, we see it's processing the request. And there we go. We have our piece of code just like you saw. So that's just one quick demonstration on how you can leverage VectorShift. But there is a ton within here. I have a number of other videos on the platform as well. If you're interested, I'll leave those within the description of the video. You can leverage all of these state-of-the-art large language models. You can use knowledge bases within here. There's a ton of different integrations within here. So if you want to have something that you integrate within Slack or Salesforce or Google Drive and accesses all of the different documents that you have within there, you will definitely be able to build out a ton of useful stuff within here. You can also set it up with particular triggers as well, which is a great use case. There are data loaders within here. There's multimodal capabilities. So if you want to generate audio or if you want to generate images, you can do all of that within here. 
But overall, it's a platform with a ton of different features that I encourage you to check out. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing overviews of the platform, I'll link those within the description of the video. Alternatively, if you're interested in these types of videos where you can see how to build out these common patterns, whether it's with workflows or agentic flows, just let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.